اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سو وی ہیو دس لاسٹ ٹائم وی اسٹڈیڈ دا دس کلاس کین وی گو ٹو دا ماسک آفٹر ایٹنگ ان کوکڈ اونین اور گارلک According to Hadith 341 of Masnad Imam Ahmad, no, we cannot. And what is the ruling for wiping over the leather socks instead of washing the feet during the wudu? <clears throat> Can you tell me yes or no? Yes, um, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, just wiped when he, he, when he wore the leather socks. He just, he didn't take the leather socks off. He just wiped, like, just took water and wiped on it. Okay. <clears throat> Can you tell me the answer in detail, the one we studied last time? You uh, you didn't uh, go in detail. You said yeah. if you maybe Zuhur Salah and you just took Udu and then now um, you've already wore your leather socks. Now the, the time of Asir reach, you don't need to take off your leather socks uh, to take Udu. You do your Udu as normal and you just um, take water and wipe your feet three times like normal. Okay. But it should be in 24 hours. The next day you have to take now a new udo. Yes. <clears throat> so once we wash our feet and complete the udo and wear our leather socks, then we don't need to wash them unless we remove the socks or unless 24 hours are passed. There we have the Quran class, Ayah 88 of Surah Nisa. First, we know you will have Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A'udhu billahi min shaitan ar-Rajim. Then what is the matter with you that you are divided into two parties about the hypocrites? Allah has cast them back to disbelief because of what they have earned. Do you want to guide him whom Allah has made to go astray? And he whom Allah has made to go astray, you will never find for him the, any way of... So our job is just to convey the message of Allah. We cannot guide anyone. Only Allah can guide anyone. So our job is to just convey. If someone from our family is non-Muslim, our job is just to convey the, the message. Treat them good. If Allah wants to guide them, Allah will guide them. Otherwise, they will stay astray. Don't be sad about this. Ms. Hoor, read the next one. They wish that you reject faith as they have rejected faith and thus that you all become equal like one another so take not protectors or friends from them till they immigrate in the in the way of allah to muhammad sallallahu but if they turn uh, turn back them whenever you find them and take take neither Protector or kill them uh, wherever you find them and take neither protector or friends nor helpers from them. So for non-Muslim governments, there are three things which Islam tells us to do.
how Islamic government shall deal with the non-Muslims or hypocrites. So first thing, invite them to Islam. This is the first option with the non-Muslims. Invite them to Islam and ask them to join the Muslim country. This is the first option. If they don't agree with this option, then the second option is to, <clears throat> to write a peace treaty. Peace treaty in which they will promise that they will not help our enemies and we will not help their enemies. This is the second option. Or third option is to pay the jizya tax in which the Islamic government will protect them and they will pay this tax to Muslims and Muslims will protect them from their enemies. And they will basically come under the Islamic government. If they don't accept any of these three options, like they reject the second option as well, they don't follow the second option as well, then Muslims can fight against them legally. Islam allows them, allows us to fight against them. That thing is mentioned here. And also Allah tells us that we cannot take a non-Muslim as a protector or friend. Sadly, these days some Muslims countries are taking protection of USA. They pay USA billions of dollars and in return USA provide them some army for protection. Islam does not allow this with any non-Muslim country. So we, they will never protect us. So we cannot, we can never take protection from them. I think Saudi, Dubai, Qatar, they have some such agreements with the USA. They provide them billions of dollars and in turn they provide them defense support. Next. Except those who join a group between you and whom there is a treaty of peace, or those who approach you with their breasts restraining from fighting you as well as fighting their own people. Had Allah willed, indeed, He will have given them power over you and, and they will have fought, fought you. So if they withdraw from you and fight not against you and offer you peace, then Allah has opened no way for you against them. So this second option, peace treaty is mentioned here. If they sign a peace treaty with us, then we cannot fight against them according to this Quranic ayah. But if they don't sign the peace treaty, then we can fight, fight against them. No, Miss Who, read the next one. You will find others that wish you have security from you and security from their people every time they are sent back to uh, temptation. They are there too if they withdraw not from you, nor offer you peace, nor restrain their hands take take hold of them and kill them where wherever you find them in their case we have provided you with a clear warrant against them so this is this is basically for those who break the peace treaty with the muslim yes may assign a peace treaty, but in background, they help our enemies. In this case, we can attack them. Islam allows us to attack them if they break the peace treaty. Ms. 
it is not for a believer to kill a believer, except that is be by mistake. And whosoever kills a believer by mistake, it is ordained that he must set free a believing slave and a compensation, blood money, that is there, be given to the deceased family unless they remit it. If the deceased belong to a people at war with you and he was a believer, the freeing of a believing slave is prescribed. And, he, and if he belong to people with whom you have treaty of mutual, of mutual alliance, compensation, blood money, dear, must be paid to his family, and a believing slave must be freed. And who finds this the penance of freeing a slave beyond his means, he must pass for two consecutive months in order to seek repentance from Allah. And Allah is ever all-knowing, all-wise. So this is for those when we someone is unintentionally killed. For example, you are dri driving a car and someone just come in front of you and you hit that person by mistake. That person die in the car accident. Then what will you do? In that case, you need to play pay the blood money. And also, you must fast for two consecutive months. So, blood money will be paid to the victim family and you will fast for two consecutive months if you kill someone by mistake. We will not write any question about this one. Miss Ho, read the next one. And whoever kills a believer intention is recompense. He is here is held to uh, abide therein and the wrath and the course of Allah are upon him and a great punishment is prepared for him. Okay. Read the footnote as well. Mm. Narrated Ibn Umar Allah's Messenger said, A faithful believer remains at liberty regarding his uh, religion unless he kills somebody unlawfully. So what is the punishment for killing a believer? intentionally like robbers do or some greedy people do this thing they kill a believer for worldly benefit the punishment is hellfire where they will stay for a long time so if someone kills a believer intentionally his punishment is hellfire Mr. Muhammad, next. Oh, you who believe, when you go to fight in the cause of Allah, verify the truth and say not to anyone who greets you by embracing, by embracing Islam. You are not a believer seeking the perishable goods of the worldly life. There are much more profit and booty with Allah. Even as he is now, so were you yourself before till Allah conferred on, conferred on you his favors that is guided you to Islam. Therefore, be cautious in discrimination. Allah is ever well aware of what you do. So in the battle, when both armies are killing each other, so some people you may find come to you from enemy side and when they see you that you are going to kill them, they just embrace Islam. In that case, we cannot kill them. So, if even if he is lying, we don't know what is in his heart, whether he is truth, true or whether he is lying. In both cases, we cannot kill that person. If anyone embraces, even in the battle, in the war, we cannot kill him. Miss Hoor, 
Next. Not equal are those of the believers who sit, who, who sit at home, except those who are disabled by injur, injury, or are blind or lame, and those who strive hard and fight in the in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lives. Allah has preferred in, in grades those who strive hard and fight with their wealth and their life their their life above those who sit at home unto each Allah has promised good paradise but Allah has preferred those who strive hard and and fight above those who sit at home by a hug reward. Huge reward. Next one as well. Degrees of higher, higher grades from him and forgiveness and mercy and Allah is ever of for <clears throat> So Allah has told us here that there are two types of Muslims, those who participate in the holy wall against the non-Muslims and those who don't participate in the holy wall. So those who participate, they will have higher level in paradise as compared to those who don't participate in the holy wall. That thing is mentioned here that anyone who will participate in the holy wall against the non-Muslim will have a higher level, higher grade in the paradise. Ms. Ummi Ahmad. Verily, as for those whom the angels take in death while they are wronging themselves as they stayed among the disbelievers, even though immigration was obligatory for them. The angel said to them, In what condition were you? They replied, We were weak and oppressed on the earth. The angel said, was, was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to immigrate therein? Such men will find their abode in, in hell. What an evil destination. This ayah is for those people who are living in a country where they don't allow to practice Islam. Do you know any such country where they don't allow to practice Islam? Yes or no? No, maybe like France, they stay banned to, to wear hijab. Yes, France is an example of this country. Then China also, in some parts of China, they don't allow to practice Islam. Then in some other European countries as well, I think, they don't allow some Islamic practices. So in that case, if the government doesn't allow you to practice Islam, then you must migrate from that place. So your job is to try to migrate. If you don't try, then angels will say to you, was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to migrate? Such people will find their abode in hell. So if government does not allow you to practice Islam, then you need to try to migrate from that place. It is command. From Allah Almighty. We better write this question. What action the Muslims do? If the government does not allow them to practice 
इस्लाम आंसर इज दे मस्ट माइग्रेट फ्रॉम डेट प्लेस दे मस्ट माइग्रेट फ्रॉम डेट प्लेस अकॉर्डिंग टू आया नाइंटी सेवन ऑफ सूडा अनिशा अकॉर्डिंग टू आया नाइंटी सेवन ऑफ सूडा अनिशा Miss Hoor, repeat the question and the answer. What shall the Muslim do if the government does the allow them to? According to Hadith ninety seven of Surah An Nisa, they must migrate from their place. This is not Hadith. This is Aya, Quranic Aya. Okay. Next thing is accept the weak among them and women and children who cannot devise a plan. So basically, those people who cannot, it is not possible for them to migrate. They will be forgiven. Otherwise, a normal person will be sent to hell. So if a normal person does not migrate, he will be sent to hell. But according to the next ayah. the weak people who cannot afford or it is not possible for them to migrate they will be forgiven miss ummi ahmed next these are them who allah is likely to forgive them and allah is ever pardoning over for of forgiving mm -hmm. so in france or in china which muslims will be forgiven by allah or and which muslims will be punished by allah those who are able to migrate is um, they will not be forgiven by allah but those who are weak and this impossible and maybe um in financial they are not okay then allah will forgive them mm -hmm. So at least they need to try. If they try, Allah will forgive them. If they don't try, then there is no forgiveness for them. Okay, you are from which country, Miss Ummi Ahmed? And ah, here I'm in London now. You are London, and what is your original country? Kenya. Kenya. So you. Kenya living in both are non-Muslim country, Anna. Right? Yeah, but uh, Kenya is uh, you are they we just have lots of mosque and Muslim are in like in Mombasa. There's a specific place. Mm -hmm. There are more Muslim there, so we we practice our Islam okay. We don't have any um barrier with the government. Yes, good. And in London. In London is um also we have uh, mashallah we have mosque here around me I have like six mosques Good. around me so it's we can wear our hijab our jalbab no one is bothering us mm -hmm. we are in a good place alhamdulillah yeah alhamdulillah but when we go to Scotland somewhere when you pass when they see you with hijab or something they beat you up or they stab you or anything so um I don't think. It's good to go there. Mm, in some area, there are problems. Miss Four, read the next one. Oh, he who immigrates from his home in the cause of Allah will find on earth many revealing places and plenty to live by and. Whosoever leave, leave his home as an immigrant unto Allah and His Messenger, and death overtakes him, his reward is then 
surely incumbent upon Allah and Allah is ever of forgiving most merciful. So Allah is telling to such Muslim that if they try to migrate, they will surely find many places where they can live and practice Islam openly. So this is a kind of, a, we say, a promise from Allah to such Muslims. Just they will try and Allah will make a way for them, inshallah. So, Miyama, next. And when you Muslim travel in the land, there is no sin on you if you shorten a salah, the prayer. If you fear that the disbeliever may put you in trial, attack you, ATC, verily the disbeliever are ever un unto you open enemies. So this chronic ayah was revealed when there were non-Muslims or enemies of Islam all over the Arab. At that time Allah allowed them to shorten the plane. But even when Islam spread, this thing is still valid for us. That whenever we are traveling, whether we are traveling in an Islamic country or whether we are traveling in a non-Islamic country, we can shorten the Salah. So, can we shorten the Salah while we are traveling? So, according to Ayah 101, yes, we can. According to Ayah 101 of Surah Nisa, yes, we can. Ms. Hoor, repeat the question and answer. Can we shorten the Salah while we are, uh, we, we are traveling? Uh, according to Ayah 101, Surah Al-Nisa, yes, we can. Now read the next one. When you, O Messenger Muhammad Sallam, are among them and lead them in the prayer, let one party of them stand up with you taking with you taking their arms with them when they finish their prostration uh, let them take their uh, positions in their rear and let the other other party come up which have not yet prayed and let them pray pray with you taking and precautions and bearing on those who disbelieve which if you were negligent, negligent of your arms and your baggage to take to attack you in a single rush but there is no sin on you if you Put away your arms because of of the inconvenience uh, of rain or because you are ill. But take every precaution for yourselves. Very fly. Allah has prepared a humiliating torment for the disbelievers. So this command is for the Muslim army. When the time of Salah comes, a Muslim army should be divided into two groups. First group will pray the half Salah with the Imam. Then they will leave the Salah and other group will pray the remaining half of the Salah with the Imam. So in this way, one group will pray and another group will guard them. This ayah is for the Muslim armies. Ms. Umayyama, next. 
When you have finished as salah, the congregation prayer, remember Allah standing, sitting down and lying down on your side. But when you are free from danger, perform as salat, a kama to salat. Verily, as salat is enjoined on the believers at fixed hours. So even when you are finished with salah, you need to try to do as cars as much as possible. Whether no matter what you are doing, whether you are cooking food or whether you are doing some other housework, whether you are with family, whether you are driving car, or whether you are some other place, try to do as cars as much as possible. And so give me some examples of as cars that we can do. That we can do during the day. Anyone who Muhammad, do you have any example? Example of Azkar. Yes. Example of Azkar, I just do like Subhanallah. Good. Alhamdulillah. Wa la ilaha illallah. Wa Allahu Akbar. Good. Any other? And, uh, and Salatu ala Nabi. Good. Standing. Lying. Cooking. What about the, the 99 names of Allah? Yes, you can do them as well. You can read Quran as well from your memory. And you can also say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah Lazim. This one is the greatest zikr. Try to memorize it. It is quite easy and it is the greatest zikr. Listen. Subhanallah. Which one? Subhanallah. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-Azim I will repeat Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-Azim Try to repeat Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-Azim Yes And you can do any easy car, no problem So what can we do while cooking, lying, cooking, etc. So no matter what you are doing, according to 103, try to do as many as cars as possible. According to Aya 103. Try to do as many as cars as possible. For example, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La Hukbar, Subhanallah, wa Bihamdihi, Subhanallah, La Zim, La Ilaha Illallah, La Ilaha Illallah, Wa Hadaw La Sharika Lahu, La Hadun Kowala, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Kuli Shain Kadir. You can read the 99 names of Allah, you can recite the Quran, you can send Salah upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you can do any of these things, whatever you try to do as cars as much as possible. So instead of thinking in your mind or doing unnecessary chit chat, try to do as cars as much as possible. Mr. So Muhammad, repeat the question and the answer. What shall we do while sitting, standing, lying, cooking, and many more? According to Ayah 103 in Surah An-Nisa, try to do as many adhkar as possible. For example? For example, like Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, and this Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah, al -Azim. We will stop here and next time, inshallah, we will continue. Anybody, any question? Yeah, I just wanted to ask you if, uh, like you say, you can't praise someone in front of his face. But if maybe I say you're beautiful, then I say, mashallah, also is not allowed. No, it is not allowed. Oh, because they, some people say Allahu barik or something like that. So they say when you say like that, so it's okay. Actually, so I wanted to.
for example if there is a girl everyone starts to come and saying you are very beautiful you are very beautiful so uh this will raise a sense of pride in her that i am more beautiful than other girls so this will be not good for her in the long run that's why islam does not allow it okay ah, okay okay only husband can praise her his wife even if she is not looking good he will say you are looking very good otherwise yeah. we cannot praise anyone else okay spoon your spoon spoon your okay shukran jazakallah khair anybody else any question So see you all next time, inshallah. Inshallah. Today we have um Arabic class, yeah. Five. Yes, yes inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Wa alaikum. Wa salam. Wa salam.